Amit Shah is head of India Research at Bank of America Securities. He's with us here on the program to uh, take some questions. Uh, Amish, uh, good morning. Great to see you back on the uh, channel. Appreciate your time, Prashant, this side. Uh, you know, so we've been sort of treading water just under uh, earlier highs. No real meaningful shake-off or uh, correction at all. There was a, you know, a fortnight short-lived correction in January and then maybe this mid-cap uh, one-day kind of sell-off that we saw earlier. Uh, but beyond that, not very much. How are things looking, Amish? Is it uh, up, up and away? Because now we are heading closer to the general elections as well. Uh, and uh, recent opinion polls, etc., show uh, that uh, Prime Minister Modi and the BJP and the NDA alliance is in pretty top shape. Sure. Uh, good morning, uh, Prashant. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, look, you know, uh, if I were to talk for the year as a whole, uh, we do think that Nifty will continue to do well. Uh, you know, as you know, our target for the whole year uh, for Nifty is around 23,000 in the base case. We do uh, think that in the best case, it could even go to 24 and a half thousand. Uh, so there is upside. In the near term, I think uh, markets may consolidate because uh, there is rising risk of accelerating inflation in the US. Uh, you know, that pushes out the view on the Fed rate cuts uh, that one had earlier. Uh, and, uh, you know, a relatively muted third quarter earnings, I would argue. Amish, morning. Rima here. Today, Bofa has the Bofa research team has put out a note on PSU banks where you've upgraded State Bank of India and Bank of India. Uh, you go on to say that um, you know the valuations are converging to just one to price to book, pricing in a cyclical improvement, and there's room for FI positioning in PSU banks to go <clears> up. <throat> so tell us when you try and talk to the FIs about PSU banks, and hitherto they've stayed away from uh, most of the PSUs at large. Uh, what is now the opinion amongst the FIs and how much could they go out and buy and can it be at the expense of private sector banks? Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, because uh, first of all, there was a massive ROE differential between the private banks and the PSU banks. Uh, and as a result, there was a massive valuation differential between the two as well. But as the ROE differential is now shrinking, uh, you know, the, uh, the view is that a PSU banks' valuation should start expanding and converging to some extent with the private sector banks uh, and operationally as well as you know as we all know uh, PSU banks uh, and PSU pack in general uh, has been uh, improving on an operational front you know so that deserves uh, you know this rally to continue you know so specifically on the PSU banks we think uh, OPEX uh, now is going to uh, you know OPEX run rate is not going to grow as fast uh, you know they do have a pretty strong a liability franchise, you know, they will be probably be able to gain a reasonable market share from CASA. Uh, valuations, as I said, are relatively uh, still uh, at a discount to private sector banks. Uh, and as a result, we think that that rally can continue. Okay, all right. Um, hi, Amish. Uh, good morning and, uh, you know, good to see you in as always. What are you making of these other, uh, you know, the, the clutch of stocks that are doing very, very well? The OMCs, the oil and gas stocks. You know, someone would say that re-rating is taking place. The way those stocks have moved is a bazooka move. What's your view on them from your on? Um, so, so uh, yes, Nigel, you know, we are not uh, in general positive on the PSU uh, rally as a whole. Uh, you know, we think that, you know, one should uh, look at it more on a bottom-up basis. Uh, so the power, steel and the energy pack of the PSU rally is something that we are not comfortable with. Uh, you mentioned the energy stocks within that. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we do think that the PSU banks, uh, you know, some stocks uh, on a bottom-up basis linked to defense or railways, uh, that those are the pockets of opportunities within PSUs that we are, that we are more excited about. <clears throat> yeah, no, uh, absolutely uh, got that. Uh, Amish, uh, you know, just a quick word on, you know, many have said this, and I'm sure you've heard it from investors on the buy side, etc., as well, that the real bull market and the way to capture uh, the, gr the, the, the growth story, the infrastructure spend, the CAPEX spend, is via, a, you know, smaller companies, not the big giant conglomerates, etc. Uh, to that end, uh, Amish, from, you know, in your coverage universe and, you know, uh, w what are the best sort of plays there? What kind of companies, what kind of names? I'm talking about the sl slightly longer term here. So, Prashant, you know, see, look, first of all, as we've discussed in the past, uh, you know, clearly the uh, CAPEX cycle is going to be, uh, you know, here for long. Uh, you know, we, we've been arguing for 10 years of CAPEX upcycle. Uh, 
we are currently only in the third year of it. Uh, you know, so from a long term perspective, uh, you know, there there is genuinely uh, uh, you know earnings upside or ROE multiple expansion. Uh, you know, so 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 these sectors are typical deep cyclical sectors, and as a result, the delta that you see in terms of growth is meaningful. Uh, uh, you know, in 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 terms of how it should be evaluated as stocks, I think we have created four baskets. Uh, so we are calling them as product companies, uh, companies that do EPC contracts or so project companies, the asset owners, and the indirect beneficiaries in terms of uh, whether it is loan growth for banks or it's steel or cement demand uh, for those sectors. You know, so those, so that's a pretty wide spectrum on how we can play that. Uh, you are right that uh, the delta of growth uh, will be higher for the mid cap and the small cap companies. Not all of uh, them we are bullish anymore, uh, given uh, the kind of valuation expansion that we've seen in that sector. Uh, but uh, I would argue that even the large cap uh, EPC companies or uh, even the cement companies or even uh, you know uh, some of the banks which are more wholesale focused, even they are not as expensive if you're really trying to play this from a long-term perspective. Uh, so it's a it's a pretty wide spectrum, uh, and I would argue that uh, several sectors and stocks will benefit on the back of the CAPEX-led uh, upcycle that we're talking about. So you like large cap EPC, some of the cement names, some PSU banks. What else, Amish? What else do you like? And you also said that you know some of the mid caps now are unattractive because of the valuations. It's also important to know what to avoid. So tell us, what is it that you don't like now? So uh, you know, uh, again, as I said, that you know, I, I unfortunately because I can't talk stocks, but you know, generalizing it, uh, while the thematic in defense uh, and railways, for instance, is for real, uh, we think that you know, in the in the here and now valuations have clearly gone uh, much ahead of expectations. Uh, so they are pricing in like three, four, five years of growth already. Uh, and while I'm I'm a believer in the CAPEX cycle, you know, execution is a different ball game altogether. And one will have to, uh, you know, execution is not always perfect. Uh, so I think the stocks are not discounting for that as of now. Uh, you know, so, so let's say as an example, you know, some of the automation companies, uh, you know, if I were to assume that the cycle goes on till 2030, and if I were to throw in the best case working capital estimates, the best case margins, the best case order flow growth that they can get, uh, and, then, and then assume that 2030 is the end of the cycle, so their valuation comes back to the, uh, to, to the normalized levels versus the peak valuations or peak cycle valuations. Uh, we are basically saying that you know from here until 2030, these stocks now have only a 50% upside left. Uh, so 50% upside over a seven year period is around 7% CAGR returns, which is something that you can generate out of a government bond, uh, which is very safe. Uh, you know, so, so is the risk reward now worth it is the debate. Uh, uh, you know, and then as a result, you know, I think what the, what the markets are basically doing is that they are trying to get that entire 50%, uh, which is due in the next seven years upfront, and which is the worry that I'm talking about, that yes, that upside is justified, but it is too soon uh, that we are seeing in these talks which is the discomfort that we have. So that's uh, broadly on railways and defense. Are there any other um, you know, sectors or themes or pockets where markets have front-loaded all the gains? And there is that execution uh, risk? It, it, yeah, I mean, I, I think the power generation, power transmission uh, you know, companies as well, I would probably put in a few of the automation stocks within that as well. Uh, you know, so uh, you know, we've, we've been downgrading a lot of stocks uh, within the mid and small cap, uh, uh, you know, coverage within the CAPEX theme, despite being so bullish on the CAPEX cycle overall. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, Amish, China has been in disarray, so to call it, and data points are not, uh, you know, looking good from there. But I think some part of the street is a little bit optimistic that maybe they have hit a trough and things will improve from year on. If that's the case, then metal demand will improve. And that's why, you know, even though there are risks to quarter four numbers for some of these metal stocks, but most of them have seen a big surge. How are y'all playing this entire metals theme? Do y'all believe there's scope to move up? And if yes, what do you like, ferrous and non-ferrous? Uh, so Nigel, un unfortunately, we are yet not a believer of the big uh, pickup in the economic recovery of China. Uh, so in fact, uh, as, you, as we know, one third of the China, uh, uh, you know, one third of the Chinese steel demand is from China real estate, uh, which is not something that we think will improve in a hurry. Uh, and as a, as a result, uh, steel as a basket 
is not generally the, uh, uh, what we are positive on. Uh, the non-ferrous is uh, uh, relatively what we prefer at this point. Lovely. All right, Amesh, thanks so much uh, for joining in and filling us in with all of those uh, details. Wishing you a good Friday ahead and look forward to having a chat with you rather soon.